Alright, so today we are looking at EXO and um, we will be um, doing a quick example. So let's start with a simple Excel worksheet. We're going to start to do everything from scratch. So open a blank worksheet and then you can get started right away. Okay, so in the A1 cell, you're going to type top star clothing. Right, and um, below that you can give your name and the student ID. Okay. You can give the student ID in the bracket. And then we are going to give uh, department, say 2018, 2019, and then you can build to 2020, 2021. So we're going to give the sales. So here we want to insert something between this row and this row. So to do that, you can click on the, on the last row about which on the row about which you want to insert a new row so right click over here and then click insert and then you have a new row right so here you can type in let's say we we are talking about sales and then line number five we're going to give you department names uh, let's say cosmetics and uh, shoes Toys, clothes, baby items, okay, and after that we'll give the total, and then we're also going to calculate the average of all of these department, average sales from all of these department, and then max sales and then minimum sales and then number of department uh, just for the sake of using this count function we have count all right so here we are give, we're going to give some values um, so I'm gonna use these values so these are the sales values for let's say cosmetics for example and then we'll say 90 something and we'll say 126 something and 169 and shoes 120 50,000 so here as I'm entering this data I'm after this I'm pressing tab to go to the next one and uh, after adding the last item in that row I'm gonna press enter here so it goes down right over here um, tab and then we give another value and tab and we give another value and tab and then we give another value and press enter here so it comes down so it makes it uh, somewhat easy to keep on entering data without lifting your hands from the keyboard and then finally the baby item Okay, so we need to find the total of all of these items here. So to find the total, there are more than one way in which you can uh, find the total. Um, so here we are going to use a function called sum. So you can simply type that in, sum equal. So all 
always start with the equal sign and then we say sum that is the name of the function and then all function have like brackets within which you give the input so our input is the values from 2018 starting from cosmetics all the way to baby so the address here is b5 to b9 right so um, so you can type this in or you can even select it right so we selected it uh, I selected it so you can even type that in directly and then press enter now another way in which you can get this is by clicking on the auto sum option and then select sum so when you select auto sum option what happens is it's going to uh, also select 2018 which is the year but we don't want to sum the 2018 um, we only want to sum these five items so you need to reselect here like that so that um, we have from B5 to B8 so that's what we are summing here so here you can see that it is giving us a warning uh, telling us that okay you may have missed one of the numbers here okay so if you click on that it will tell you formula omits adjacent cells so which is it's telling that you may have missed this 2019 but we know for sure that it is um, a year uh, so you, you don't need to add that right so now you can ignore the error here so when you do that it will remove that uh, warning so I'm gonna do that at the end so I'm gonna keep that for the time being so once you do this for one uh, doing it for the others is pretty easy you can just fill it right so fill is done by using the fill handle here so here if you look at this corner of this one here that's uh, that is a square uh, that is a dark uh, green square right in the bottom right hand corner of this cell uh, the selected cell selection here um, so you click on this the square there so as you take your mouse pointer to that square you can see that mouse pointer changes into a lean um, crosshair and now when that does that you can click on it and then drag it to fill it so when you do that it's going to simply copy this formula over here and then change the reference as needed so here it copied it and then changed the reference as needed so it's not going and adding that it's actually adding uh, what is above this right so uh, Excel does that for you right so let's do the second one here so here the average is the same thing so here are very similar to sum um, we're giving the same inputs but only thing that we're changing is the function name so we we want a different function we want to average it not sum it over here so um, you can start by typing equal average open bracket and then within that you can give the same range that is b5 starting from cosmetics colon b9 And then close bracket and press enter so that will give you the average sales for all those departments now you can simply fill this now as we did before we can also do the average using um, selecting the function from here from next to the auto sum so I select this cell where I want the average next to here there is a next to the auto sum there is a um, arrow which expands to show other functions so here we're going to select average so click on average here and then now with the moment you select average see the range it's going to select everything there so it selects from b10 b4 to b10 so you have to select uh, the right range so that is from b5 to b9 so that is the range we want to use so go ahead and reselect it and then press enter to find the average now you can also just type that function uh, within bracket you can give 
b5 to b9 and press enter so at this point we're going to press enter in your keyboard press enter so you have that now for the rest of it you can simply fill it so here again i'm moving my mouse pointer towards that fill handle in the bottom right hand corner so once you click on the fill handle click and drag to the right and there you have it all the averages are for all the year so we'll do the same thing for max to start with the equal sign I'm going to say max, open bracket, and I'm going to select the range from cosmetics to baby, and close bracket, and then you press enter. So I'm going to show the formulas here. So I can show the formulas by going to the formula option, and then select show formulas. So when I select show formulas, it shows all the formula. It goes into the formula view where it's showing the formula we have been entering for some average and max. Now we are going to add the min. So it's the same formula here. I mean, as it is the similar function, only thing that is changing is the, uh, the function name. So we're also going to give b5 to b9, b5 to b9, close bracket. So that's for min and for count, if you guessed it already, it's just count b5 to b9 and close back. So now we have max, min, and count. So if you want to look at the numbers, you have to um, hide the formulas and show the numbers here. So I'm going to go to formulas and then click show formulas again to off that formula view now you can see the numbers here so here the maximum is 142,000 so which is over here minimum is 70,600 uh, which is for the baby now you can also fill these together you don't have to fill it one by one you can fill them together select all of them and then go to the bottom of this um, selection select the fill handle, click and drag it to the right and then that's going to fill it. So this gives us um, the sales, so we did a little bit of uh, statistics, um, like we found the total for each year, um, average, max and min and count, okay, so it's currently all the same because same num amount of number just counts the number of items that we have in the range so the next is we're going we can just do a little bit of formatting here so we'll start by selecting um, our title here and then uh, yeah even before that we'll go and change the uh, cell style so let's say for the total we will use accounting number format so select the total numbers like from here all the way here and then we're going to apply accounting number format so accounting number format um, when you apply it it should give currency so this would give you a dollar sign if your computer is set up to um, US or Canada um, now if you have from elsewhere it will show the currency from your country all right and then the uh, it also shows the thousand separator so there's a comma there and then two decimal places so let's say we don't want to see these decimal places now you can remove those decimal places by using degrees decimal option so here once while this is still selected you can click on this decrease decimal two times so I'm going to click on it two times one more time I'm going to click on it and that removes the decimal places all right so um, let's do that one more time so let's say we want this to be this to use accounting number format we're going to click on accounting number format and then we want to reduce the decimal places so click on decrease decimal button 
this button here two times. All right, and then we're also going to format the rest because uh, here we have given the comma separator. So let's give the comma separators for this. Um, so this time uh, we don't want to let's say use the dollar signs. Um, so here, once you select this, you can click on comma style. So comma style is will give it the thousand separator and two decimal places but it will not give the currency symbol so let's go and click on the comma style here so there are two decimal places thousand separator but no dollar sign there so we're going to decrease the decimal places by clicking on this one this one two times one two and then we are going to do the same thing for this click on comma style and then reduce the decimal places all right so all of them have now comma separator and uh, no decimal places right okay so let's do a little bit more formatting now this is all number formatting so we have formatted using number formatting uh, which in which to do with the um, number formatting here so you can format the numbers as uh, accounting number format comma style percentage um, you can also format numbers as, as date uh, short date long date and all that so let's go and apply some cell styles so uh, let's say we want to give some emphasis to the title here so I'm going to select that from it a1 to E1, right? And then we're going to go and apply cell style and we're going to apply, let's say, heading one. Okay? So when you apply heading one, so we selected the cell style from here, heading one, after selecting A1 to E1. So here it gives you kind of a border style and then changes the font and the font size and all of that. So these are cell styles are like preset formatting that you can apply over here. So let's say you want to merge, bring this top star clothing to the middle. In that case, you have to merge in center. So I have selected A1 to E1, and from here, from the alignment grouping, you have merge in center option here, right? So merge in center. So we'll go and click on that that's going to merge and center that all right so let's also merge and center your name and student ID select that and click merge and center and we'll do that one more time for the sales merge and center all right so for sales let's go and increase the font size to 14. Okay, so you can increase the font size from here and then make it bold. Okay, so the next thing is we are going to go and format this heading so that anybody who's reading this know, will know that that's a heading. So you select that five cells and let's go and change again. Let's use the cell style here. Let's go and apply, let's say, um, accent one. Okay, accent one. So here you can see that it changes the fill. You can also do it using fill and the font color. You change the fill to um, blue and then font color to white. Now we're going to make it bold and then we're going to center it. So here we are centering, not merge and center. You cannot merge and center this because there are multiple data here um, so when you're merging and centering it's just like we did before there should be value only in the first cell so here we just want to center it by clicking on center all right and uh, let's add a few more like the total here we'll go and change the cell style here so select the total line and then apply the cell style to total. Write this one here. Okay. 
okay so we're going to select total so when you select this total it simply adds the border um, top and double bottom border here so here you can see that there is a top border and the double bottom border for the total and it also bolds it okay so it's uh, slightly more readable than it was before um, emphasizing uh, things that are important like the totals for each year now you may have noticed that department is not fully displaying right so we can get that fully to fully display by adjusting the height here so you can auto adjust the height uh, uh, the width rather so you can auto adjust the width of the column a by double clicking in between a and b so right here you can double click that auto adjust the width to fit the longest word on that column so just go between a and b and when the mouse pointer changes to this it's simply double click all right so we have um, uh, we have a table for sales so let's uh, go and create another table for expenses so right over here we're going to type expenses and uh, we're going to leave this blank over here you can say 2018 2019 and then you can just fill the rest and uh, we're going to give inventory salary rent and other expenses so here you can see that it's slightly going beyond the width of the column you can do the same trick so go between a and b and then double click and then it's going to auto adjust and here we're going to give total Okay. and after that we'll go and calculate the profit okay so the expenses table um, we are going to give some numbers here so we'll start with the 150 and 80 Center tab and press enter and um, press enter and other expenses. So here we need to find the total so uh, we looked at how to calculate the total using sum you can use the same thing so I'm going to just type this in and select the values that I need to sum close bracket and press enter so you can fill the rest okay so once you give that sum function b17 minus b20 here open bracket b17 minus b20 you press enter and then select that cell and then use the fill handle to fill it to the right now I already have some formatting let's say I want to copy this formatting that I have here to here right so sales department uh, the year given here and then I also want to copy this um, accounting number format over here right um, so what you can do is you can select sales all the way to E5 I'm selecting from sales to E5 here so once you select it we are going to click format painter okay so you can click on format painter 
So Format Painter can let you copy formatting without copying the content. So I selected this and then click Format Painter once and then click on Expenses right on the expense that is A15 so you click on Expenses and then you can see that at one shot you have all of that copied alright so it's pretty useful feature in Excel which allows you to copy uh, the formatting let's copy one more formatting like the total here so we went and changed the cell style we added accounting number format so we're going to copy that by clicking on Format Painter and click on Total and it, it get copied right? so it's pretty easy uh, for you to copy that now we'll also add the profit here okay um, so for profit we are going to start by typing profit and then over here we are going to say 2018 2019 and then fill that and here we're going to say amount and find the profit amount so profit amount is the difference between the total sales minus total expense so here we start with the equal sign so here we're going to write a formula equal and then we're going to select the total sales minus and then we select total expense so it's B10 minus B21 so total of the sales so uh, we take the sales of value that is 494,600 minus the value in B21 which is 28 um, 288,000 and then press enter once you type in that formula so this B10 value in B10 minus value in B21 so this is B21 here, press enter. So once you have that, so here you have the uh, profit amount, you can fill the right, fill it to the right, so it gives you the profit for each year. So type equal B10 minus B21, and once you type it, you can fill it to the right press enter and then put it to the right all right so the formatting here um, we can again copy this right so if you need to look at that formula again pause the video and then get that done and uh, once it is done you can go ahead and format this so to format this you select expenses and the, the row next to that click format painter just like we did before click on format painter and then we're going to click on profit so you can see that that formatting is copied over to here so we also going to copy the formatting of the total to the amount profit amount so let's do the format painter one more use the form paint one more time you select the total here click on format painter and click on amount and now the amount has um, double bottom border. All right, so so we have the table. Now, when you resize it, or when you as you enter information, sometimes you might see hash tags like hash symbols. Uh, now, this is actually mm, a feature of Excel. So, if Excel is unable to show you the entire number in a cell it will not show any number right so it will not show off half of the number so because half of the number means it's it's you might one might read that value wrong right so it does not show off of the number even that is not enough space it shows hash so you can fix this by adjusting the column width for B column. So double click on B, it would adjust it to show you the full thing. You can also do it together. Select all of those columns which shows hashtags and hash symbols. And then you can double click on the border of the last one. So it's going to adjust it and show the whole number. Okay.
so now that we have this data here we're going to go ahead and create a um, graph okay so we'll, we'll create some graphs uh, at least one graph here so one of the graph that we want to create is on expense so let's say you want to see um, how the expense have been changing over time um, okay so you can do that by selecting all the expenses here so I'm selecting from A16 all the way to E20 here so selecting from A16 to E20 so once you select it we go and click insert here so there is an insert option and now let's there are so many different types of charts you can create here so uh, for this one we are going to create a uh, area stacked area chart so we're going to click on this button here drop down and then we're going to select 2d area stack chart so when you select that you can see that it uh, shows you uh, the total expenses for that year and then it is also showing um, what I had contributed to that expense so here by looking at the area chart you have an idea uh, how much um, cost for the inventory and salary rent and so on right so um, that is an area stack area chart so you can move the chart by clicking on the corner here uh, on near the border and then you can move around and you can also resize it using the handles here you can resize it a little bit and chart title you can change it to expenses and you have the chart title um, and uh, if you need to change the chart style when the chart is selected it opens up a new menu for chart design and format so from here you can change the chart style so you can select various preset styles for chart which comes um, with, yeah um, okay and you can also change the chart colors uh, from here if you like okay so um, so let's um, select one of these styles I'm just going to go ahead and use this one here and um, and then there you go so this is how we would add a simple chart um, alright so, um, so there you go So I would stop this video with this um, one here, um, and then yeah, and one more thing that is uh, the errors here. So it, it's giving us a little bit of warning. So um, you can remove this warning by selecting all of them, and clicking on this, and then you can select ignore error. So that will remove all of that warning so you can do that for this one as well click on this option we get and we'll select ignore error and then that's gonna ignore that error there okay so there you go um, so um, go ahead if required you can take a screenshot and then go ahead and submit it thanks for watching